Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to make an easy fire simulation in Blender. If you've seen my fluid tutorial, then this will be a similar difficulty to that, if not even easier. So it's a great starting point if you want to have a go at simulations. So first of all, you'll see this workspace here with our cube in the middle. Uh, we're not going to be using the cube, so we can just press delete. And what we're going to be bringing in is a circle. Uh, Shift A, by the way, to open up this menu, and then under mesh, it's circled there. But right now, this is just a ring, but we want it to produce fire on a whole circle surface. We're going to have like a campfire that comes up like this. So to fill it in, we need to go into edit mode. So to do that, we press tab, and to fill in this circle, we need it all selected. You can either select it like this or press A to select all, and then press F. To fill in the face. Now we can press tab again to go back to our normal mode, our object mode, and we can begin applying the fire simulation settings. So come up here to object and under quick effects, this is with your circle selected, click quick uh, smoke, there it is, and you should end up with this. So what this has given us is, like in our fluid simulation, it's given us a emitter, a source, that's our circle, and it's given us a domain as well, automatically, all in one. So the domain is the area that Blender looks for the simulation to be taking place. So anything that goes on out of this, it won't think there's a simulation. It will just be looking inside this box, there's our simulation, this is the circle that's producing the simulation, producing the fire, and we can bake that. So, at the moment though, it's only producing smoke. We want a fire. So, we need to change the, uh, the emitter here. So we click the circle, and come over here to our physics properties. And under this, let's expand it a bit, under this, it's already selected with for, uh, for fluid, and it's already selected for flow, but we need to change it from smoke to fire and it's already in flow, so it's going to be producing fire. If you come down here, we're going to be adding a texture. This basically means that on our circle surface, not all of it is going to be producing fire, and we can decide which parts of our circle are going to be producing fire. Because if you think about the everyday world, when you have a surface, the whole thing usually isn't on fire. It's certain bits that are burning, like on wood and things like that. So we need to apply a texture. So let's click that, but we don't have any textures here, so we need to make one. Come here to the textures panel and apply a new texture, create a new texture, sorry. And we want clouds, and that looks like this. At the moment it's very fuzzy, but we want it to be more contrasted. So under colors, we can turn up the contrast all the way to the max, which is at five. And that looks like this. Just off of experience, I think I'm going to turn it down a bit in size to around that. I think that'll be a bit good. We can adjust that later. That should be fine though. And we can come back now to our physics properties for the circle and select our texture. With that selected, there'll be certain parts of the circle that are white and they'll be producing fire, certain parts that are black that won't be producing fire. So it's the on and off using black and white. Brilliant. So now we have that set up. We can come over to our domain and mess around with some settings here. We want to turn the resolution divisions up to make it look a bit better. I usually go for around 64. Um, any number around that is absolutely fine. You can even go up to something like 100 if you'd like. Uh, 64 is just a good balance of time it takes to render, uh, sorry, to bake, and quality of simulation. I won't be messing with any of these time steps, maximum and minimum. I'll be leaving those as they are, and also be leaving the border collisions. We want to enable adaptive domain here, so click the tick, and that will basically mean uh, it's done it already, see? So we can see that it's selected the area that our fire is, and it won't be looking elsewhere for a fire simulation to be taking place. And that's exactly what we want. It will speed up the bake time. We also 
want to mess around with the vorticity. And that is down here. So it's under fire. We want to turn the vorticity up. We're going to be setting it to 1.3. This will be giving turbulence to our flames, uh, as you'd see in a campfire or something like that. Otherwise, it's going to look very um, straight, um, kind of like a Bunsen burner or something like that. It will look too perfect for a fire. And the reaction speed, uh, we could leave it here. This, um, I'm going to turn it up to 2.8. I'm just going to head back to my circle and show you this. Uh, this is the fuel. The more fuel we put into the fire simulation, the higher the flame will go. But we're going to be leaving it at 1 for now. So uh, you can turn it up if you want the flame to be bigger. But careful, sometimes it can clip through the top of the domain if it reaches too high. So uh, change these. If you're going to change these settings, uh, do, it so, do it incrementally, uh, ever so slightly. So 1.1, 1.2, something like that. Uh, back to our smoke domain. It's already under gas, so we need to change that, obviously. Um, but we do need to apply a noise. So that is this. This adds extra resolution to our fire. And we're going to be setting it to 3. It'll multiply our 64 resolution by 3 for higher quality fire. Brilliant. That's all looking good. Um, with Blender 2.9, You'll need to change this from replay to all. I found that if you bake, uh, I think this is a, a glitch, a bug that I haven't seen many people talk about actually. Um, but if you bake uh, modularly, mod, mo in 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 mod, uh, with modular enabled, um, you get a lot of kind of flickers between the noise and the original uh, fire simulation. It looks really quite terrible. So I usually bake all, and I set it to is resumable, so we can pause during. I'm going to be setting this to about 50 frames, because for this, I'm not going to be producing, um, rendering a whole animation. I'm just going to be rendering a frame. Uh, so 50 is fine, because it will get to its highest point, and that will be the fire simulation that I can then render as just one frame. With that all done, we can close up the gas menu. Oh, enable dissolve, so the smoke disappears over time. Close that up. And close up adapted domain we don't need that uh, we are all good for all of these settings now just before we bake going to check our circle ah yes under offset we're going to be adjusting this we're going to be keyframing it so over here in our timeline over time we want our fire uh, texture our texture that produces where that says where it's going to be producing fire we want that to change over time so that it's like certain parts are burning at different points and that will give us different variation in the fire so I'm going to come to frame one and I'm going to keyframe an offset of zero then I'm going to head to frame 50 and keyframe an offset of one it doesn't need to be too like uh, a big a change uh, I'll press the keyframe as well, and that'll mean it'll increase over time. Brilliant. Now that that's all done, we can bake our simulation. So come down here and click Bake All. I'll see you when it's done. Okay, halfway through baking, I realized something. Usually, I shrink down the circle as well, so I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be shrinking it by half. So S.5 like that that shrinks down our circle and now I'm going to bake again okay so that is all baked and this is our fire simulation let's have a look at it in the cycles render view it's not there okay so we need to change some settings uh, these are to do with the shading so we need to open up a separate panel come over here open this up if you just go right to the corner you can you'll see this little cross and you can create a new panel to close it uh, grab this one on the right and drag it over like that cool we need to change this to the shading panel so up here we select shader editor and with our domain selected we should see this principled volume this is our settings for the fire simulation 
shading. If we come over here to the camera, change from EV to Cycles, this is what we're going to be viewing it in, we can turn up the black body intensity. And there's our fire. It looks a bit bad at the moment, so I'm going to turn that up to 5. And I'm also going to change some world settings. So here, under world settings, I'm going to be setting the background color to, f to complete black, just like that. And I'm also going to be adding a ground plane. And removing this light. To remove it from the render as well, come up here, select this icon, and deselect it from the render next to this uh, eye. Perfect. So if we have a look through our camera, we're at a bit of a funny angle at the moment. So to get a better angle, what I'm going to do is click the fire, or the circle even, wherever it is, there it is. I'm going to press numpad um, full stop. What is it called? There's like a dot on the numpad. Press that dot, and that'll zoom it in so we can rotate around this circle. And I'm going to find a nice angle, and then do Control alt numpad 0 and that'll bring the camera to this angle. With the camera selected, I can press G and move it until I get a nice angle that I like. In fact, I might even come a bit lower with the circle selected. Come a bit lower down. I might go to object view two, just so I can see what's going on a bit better. And then control alt zero, that looks a bit better. There you go. If we have a look underneath our plane, you can see it's coming through a bit much. So if we click it, press G, Z, we can move it down so the fire just about clips through. There we go. Let's have a look later in our simulation. There we go, it's looking a bit better later on. That looks good. Let's find a frame that we like. I think that's a good frame. I'm going to select my camera, pull out a bit, and move up a bit as well. That looks good to me. I'll also expand this ground plane a bit. Oh, I can close up the shader editor too. That's a bit annoying. Should have done that earlier. Right. This is our fire simulation as it is now, and it's looking very nice actually. Um, some of the things we do need to change are back in the shader editor, so let's open it back up and go to shader editor. With our smoke domain selected, we need to mess around with some settings. So, at the moment it actually looks quite good, but we could make it look a bit better. It's producing light, but let's get it to produce a bit more. Let's set this to 10. And set the temperature to 1100. Now that looks a bit bright, so I'm going to bring the black body and temperature back down to 5. That might even be too bright generally. It might even be better before. Ah, not 100. 1000. A lot of this now is just tweaking to kind of preference. And what you think looks good as a fire. I think that looks quite nice. So I'll select my ground plane. I'm going to set it, give it a material of, of gray. That looks good to me. I think as well, I'll make the circle not appear in the render. So up here and deselect those. And now if we come to the output properties, we can change some of the settings here. We can leave it at 1080p. 100% uh, resolution, um, but we only want one frame really. Where if you want your whole simulation, you can render your whole simulation, it'll look lovely. But I only want one bit. That frame looks quite good actually. I think I'll go with this frame um, and I'll change some of these output settings in the camera. So I need to be using my GPU really. Um, rendering at 128 um, samples is good. 
Uh, I'll turn on adaptive sampling as well, and I'll also enable denoising, which is a really powerful tool. Um, so definitely enable the denoising here, the NLM denoising. Uh, you'll also want to reduce the number of light paths for if you want to speed up rendering. Uh, four is absolutely fine. Set it to four, and that will look fine. Under performance, if you're using a GPU, I usually set my tiles to 256 by 256. And that is all good. I'm going to come up here to render and render image. And this is the final product. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. I hope your fire looks good. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. Uh, but other than that, um, I hope you have a nice day. Bye-bye.